And our next topic is going to be emotional intelligence. And for this topic, I have invited Dr. Jane with me. Hi, Jane. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. So, yes, and we're going to talk about uh, emotional intelligence and why that is important for mental, uh, mental wellness. So, Dr. Jane, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Oh, well, um, I am the, a certified psychotherapist. I work as a success coach, so I help people all around the world in their successes in business. I do a lot of executive coaching. Um, but individuals come to me because they realize that uh, the individuals who come to me realize that they have kind of a, a roadblock. There's something that's stopping them from that next level of greatness. And so we get in there and, and, and massage their mind and figure out where the blocks are. We clear them and then they can skyrocket. And so that's really, that's really what my heart mission is, is to help individuals skyrocket past those roadblo roadblocks or, or walls that are holding them back. Mm -hmm. And uh, how you are enrolled uh, with emo um, emotional intelligence? Well, emotional intelligence, this is actually one of my favorite topics to talk about and teach on because a lot of people get it wrong. So I love to be able to, to clear the air and clarify what it actually means. So um, I got involved with emotional intelligence just because my background in psychology, it's, it is a staple of understanding how to help someone as a psychotherapist, how to help someone, you have to be able to determine their level of emotional intelligence so that you understand how to, to treat them, how to interact with them in a way that's going to be meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I, I really love it. The, the thing that most people get wrong about it, if I can just start there, like, let's just clear. Yeah. That. Let's start from like explaining everybody what is emotional intelligence. Fantastic. Okay. Well, I've got a lot of notes. So I'm going to be looking down because I don't want to miss a beat. And sometimes I'll mm -hmm. get talking and I'll just. Yeah. And if, if I'm looking down, everybody, then I'm writing things down. So if you want to write things down as well, that's great. Yes, I do. <laughs> Always have paper and pen. Ask any of my clients. They're like, she writes everything down. I do. If it doesn't, if it doesn't end up in my notebook, then it didn't happen. So uh, emotional intelligence, a lot of people get this wrong. So the way that they get it wrong is they believe that emotional intelligence means that you have emotions and you can recognize what they are. That's not, everybody has emotions. Everybody, not everybody really takes the time to recognize what they are, but everyone can recognize what they are. That's not what emotional intelligence is. That's just emotions. Emotional intelligence is the ability to self-regulate, which is one of the keys of emotional intelligence that we'll go through mm -hmm. today, to self-regulate and discern and control those emotions. It doesn't mean that you're denying the emotions and you're sad and acting like you're happy. That would actually be the opposite of emotional intelligence because okay. recognizing what's going on inside of ourselves and honoring that energy, honoring that truth, and then proceeding with aligned actions to either sustain that truth, if it's a positive vibration, if it's something that feels good, if it's taking us in the direction of our goals or correct that direction. If it's something that's not aligned with what we should be doing, thinking or the vibration that we want to be feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, how a person understands how, what would be the first steps to do to understand that? Like, uh, actually, like apply it uh, in real life. Absolutely. That is a great question. So if you're, if you're thinking, okay, wait, I thought emotional intelligence was just having emotions and recognizing that. And now you realize that it's something a little bit deeper. The first thing to do is just really, and you know, like Brett just said, like write things down. I love to journal and mm -hmm. you can start out by having a feelings journal. Um, I actually do it with my smartwatch. It has, um, it, it's not called an emotional intelligence app, but I have an app on my smartwatch that I can check in and just do check-ins throughout the day to see how I'm feeling. Am I feeling okay. frustrated? Am I feeling sad? Am I feeling mm -hmm. excited? Am I feeling content? You don't have to mm -hmm. be feeling anything yes. that's off the charts. Contentment? Hey, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Seven oh. days out of seven. I think a lot of people, what they do wrong as well, like they only uh, acknowledge like the negative feelings. 
But like you were just mentioning, it's so important to put those good feelings out there. So you will recognize them, you feel them, you take like full, full advantage of them. Absolutely. And it's, it's not wrong that we recognize negative feelings first. Our brains mm -hmm. are built to find dangerous patterns. And so it's supposed to amplify that because let's just say, um, I hope this doesn't happen to anyone, but let's just say that someone's in a building that that has an emergency in it, like a fire or something like that. You want to have an emotion or some sort of a response, a reaction tied to that news that makes you get up and get out and get mm -hmm. to safety, you know? So mm -hmm. you you want to have responses and, and reactions to things, but you want them to be metered, almost measured, so that they make sense. Have you ever mm -hmm. talked with anybody who is just really, really, really passionate about something and their energy coming from them when they're talking with you about it is a little too much, you know? That would be me usually. <laughs> I hold it back. I learned to hold it back because I know like somebody can get overwhelmed when I do it. So I like, I sometimes I have to hold it back. Well, let me, let me correct you. So the first, okay. the first step in emotional, uh, uh, emotional intelligence is just simply being aware. And you're right. Don't just be aware of the negatives. Be aware of the positives. Be like, man, there's absolutely nothing wrong in this moment. Before we came on here, before we started the streaming, we we're like, you know, good morning. How are you? Hello. How are you? And I said, you know, there's nothing to complain about today. It's mm -hmm. just a beautiful day. It's a beautiful gift that we have. Stop in those moments when you're like, there's not a thing wrong. There's mm -hmm. not a thing wrong with the world. And even if there were, it doesn't feel like there is. And so, you know, breathe that in. It's like mm -hmm. being outside on a hot day and the cool breeze comes and you're like, oh yeah, this feels good. Mm -hmm. You can do that with your emotions. And that is part of just being aware, be mm -hmm. aware. So I would say, Pratt, that you have not learned how to hold back, I would say you have reached the second stage, which first is awareness. The second is regulation. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, what is what is known in the psychological world as a highly sensitive person. I'm also a highly emotional person. That doesn't mean that I have a lot of emotional intelligence. I do because I've developed it, but being highly emotional doesn't necessarily mean you yes. Have emotional mm -hmm. Since I'm highly emotional, I mean, if you tell me a sad story, I'm going to connect with the energy of it and I am going to become emotional. That's what I mean by highly emotional person. We all know people like that, highly empathetic people mm -hmm. who really connect to the energy of a story and they can cry in the drop. That's me. I'll cry at those like holiday commercials if I, if I let myself. Mm -hmm. Regulation means that you understand your emotions. You understand your level of emotion. You understand what your body naturally wants to do, me, is like connect with the energy and weep. No, if it's not an appropriate time for that, let's say I'm speaking on stage, which this happened just last month. I was speaking on stage, took a question from the audience. The question was, the, the woman was just beside herself. It, she, it was such a deep and heartfelt and authentic moment in a room full of hundreds of people. Number one, that was touching. But number two, the story that she told was touching. And I mean, Jane wanted to connect and like hug and weep and, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't the right moment for that. It was the right moment for me to soften a little bit from being the speaker and the presenter, but it wasn't the right moment for me to have an emotional breakdown. Mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it, it was just not, so I'm able to go to, I'm aware of how I'm feeling. Oh, okay. I'm feeling like this. I feel my natural tendencies and now I'm going to regulate it down so I can soften my voice. I can really connect with with eye contact with her and i could say i am feeling you and i know that this doesn't feel good but i'm not boohooing while i'm doing it it's not like mascara city mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so yeah, i understand that's regulation so bravo i wouldn't say you're holding back i just say i've learned how to regulate my emotions i've learned mm -hmm. how to regulate my energy which that is a huge step in, in, in emotional intelligence and you can be book smart and street smart and not have emotional intelligence. But you, my friend, do have emotional intelligence, clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, But how do people develop it? 
like for like we have done the work but like for the viewers like how can they start developing what would be the first steps for them to do absolutely uh well first i keep that feelings journal that's just something mm -hmm. that anybody can do make an intention that i'm going to feel everything that i can feel the good the bad the in between don't judge when you write it down you don't have to write long poetry to yourself just write angry and if you want to write what inspired the anger Notice I didn't say what made you angry because nothing can mm -hmm. make you angry except for yourself. That's me taking control of my own emotions. That's part of regulation, mm -hmm. part of emotional intelligence. What inspired the anger? I'm angry because the neighbor who promised to not have her dog bark at five in the morning let her dog out again. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that, whatever. Just yeah. write it down. Um, then a little while later, happy. Why? I don't know, just because. Great. Yes. You know, happy, mm -hmm. sunny day, whatever, you know, just start keeping that journal. And the more you're aware, the easier you're going to be able to connect to that regulation. I mean, obviously, another another thing you can do is get a mentor, get a coach, you know, connect mm -hmm. with somebody who knows how to guide you through. Because there, I mean, there are 12 basic platforms for emotional intelligence. And it takes a while to really grow in them. But there are several people I've been working with for actually not that long. and they came to me and we started working on this and I'm seeing huge, huge progress with them. And it's interesting because this world, social media, like there's so many things that can just come in and irritate. And I mean, you're a happiness expert, you know this, there's so many things that can knock you off that high flying disc. And if you really, really focus on self-regulation, on awareness and self-regulation, just as your first two steps, that will get you so, so far. And then, then we, then we can move into, you know, what are the right social skills? What are the experiences that you should expose yourself to? Because being open to new experiences and going and actually experiencing them, that's another way to increase your emotional intelligence. Because if we just stay in our little bubble, then mm -hmm. We might be emotionally intelligent in our little bubble, but when we go outside of our little bubble and experience something different, it's kind of like being on the shore and then jumping into a riptide. You're like, you're thrown off and you don't, you know, know which way is up mm -hmm. and it could get dangerous. So, um, yeah, for me, like the way I, I few months I've been doing now a different type of journal as well. I did a journal that's, uh, I uh, connected my emotions to my, as a woman, for my uh, cycle. Oh, that's great. And I learned that a lot of the emotions were nothing to do with real, like something that were happening in the world. It was just like something in my body, my hormones, it's like their day where I like, I just, I felt sad mm -hmm. or uh, fearful. But there was nothing to be sad about, nothing to be fearful. So I re realized that they were repeating in the same time in a month. And then I was able to address it in the morning. Okay, I only feel sad because of that. And I just let it go because I was able to understand that there's actually in a real life, a moment, there's nothing to be sad about. It's just something that my body is feeling this way. Yeah, hormonal changes can inspire different feelings, sadness, guilt, um, boredom, you know, a whole a whole range of things. And I love that you did. I'd call that a moon journal because you're tracking based on your, your personal moon. So a, a moon feeling journal, that's a phenomenal. You can do, um, I, one of the people who I treat as a psychotherapist, one of my patients, I recently, um, she was asking me for recommendations about medication. Uh, she had been recommended to have um, anxiety medication. And, mm -hmm. and she said, well, I just don't think that I need it. And I said, okay, well, why does the doctor who's recommending it think that you need it? And she said, well, because I'm just stressed out all the time. And I said, are you stressed out all the time? I, I don't experience that from her. Okay. And I said, well, how about this? How about you keep a journal and I want to know everything that's going on. Um, with her, she's very, very intense. So I could take it a little mm -hmm. bit farther. I asked her to track for meals. I wanted to know, you know, do you have high, I know yesterday, my daughter and I had a big treat. We, we enjoyed vanilla milkshakes. And this morning, both of us were like, Ooh, we don't feel so well because we had all that sugar and dairy. And that just doesn't jive with us. So, um, we enjoyed it when we were having it, but this morning we were like, Hey, remind me next time. And we'll be like, no, or we'll just have like a sip instead of enjoying the whole thing. Mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, track stuff, like just track nutrition has to do with it. Literally the moon cycle, your cycle and men have cycles as well. It's yeah. not just women with menstruation. This, the, this is for the guys as well. Track mm -hmm. everything, you know, are you, I, I notice I usually take social media breaks, um, longer and more intense social media breaks during periods when um, politics, political things start really yeah. falling around because that does not bring me joy. I keep up on the things that I need to keep up on to be an informed voter, but getting getting bogged down in the mire of all that. So that's when I just start taking breaks from people. <laughs> and yes. yeah. You have to. Just watch puppy videos, which we watch mm -hmm. a lot of like baby puppies, furry cows. I know, puppies. they're so cute. And it's like, there's a reason because it spikes, the reason why people get stuck on watching them because it spikes that positive feeling. Yeah, it spikes your serotonin levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And instead of like watching the news with like you were just saying, you're watching the news when somebody is trying to potentially make you fearful, which is there is something, things to concern, to be concerned about, but there is no reason to be fearful 24 seven, but they, that's what they're trying to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just a money game. And I used to work in that industry. I used to work in television news and I can just tell you it is a money game and there's nothing that's fair or unbiasedly um, presented because a human has processed the information. And it doesn't matter what human has processed the information, they, even unintentionally, will put their own spin on it. And that's me included when I was a news producer and I've got some trophies back there from some little uh, awards that I, that I won. Like I, I was pretty good at it. And even as fair and balanced and honest and, and non-biased as I intended to be, of course I did because I'm human. Yeah. So just this is yeah. just like a, and that's what we face. That's what a lot of us face, and a lot of the viewers as well. They face with their job, whatever what job is, like a sales job. A lot of things that you have to do in a sales job mm -hmm. is to sell. Which sometimes it's good if it goes together with your values, mm -hmm. what you're selling. But some of the basic sales jobs, the the point is just the numbers, and sometimes it gets overwhelming. It does get overwhelming. And I coach a lot. I actually get uh, businesses will hire me to come in and coach their sales staffs. So I'm actually a sales coach as well as part of my executive coaching portfolio. And I mean, it's tough. I, I always tell whenever I meet um, in a sales individual who doesn't feel aligned with their product, I'll ask them if they are really dedicated to working for that company or, or could they go and find a different product? Because if your energy isn't aligned to what you're doing, it really doesn't matter what happens to the bank account. You're, there's two bank accounts involved in sales. And this wraps back to emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. You have your money because most salespeople are motivated by money. That's great because they need to go sell stuff. No problem. Yep. Exchange of money. But there's also an emotional paycheck. And this is true with any, any job, really. If you don't feel purpose, in what you're doing, or if you don't feel alignment in what you're doing, that is, it, it siphons the joy out of it. So it doesn't matter if you get paid 10 times what you need. If you don't actually have that emotional paycheck as well, mm -hmm. there is something missing. And that is why And people say, well, I don't know. I sure would like to make 10 times more than what I'm making. And of course you would. Who wouldn't? But you hear of a lot of very wealthy people who end their lives. And that is because there was a lack of purpose. And you're mm -hmm. like, wow, what could a multimillionaire or a billionaire, why in the world they had everything? They didn't have everything. It's why they took this drastic step and they lacked the emotional intelligence to back up and do the regulation and seek help one of the most emotionally intelligent things that you can do is realize that there are things that you don't know about yourself and there are things that you can't on your own discover about yourself because you need an unbiased sounding board and mm -hmm. you have to go out there and you've got to get that and a lot of people are like oh yeah my mom's great at telling me or my sister or my neighbor or my friend 
you really need an unbiased third party. I have two coaches and a mentor and they're paid, all paid, all paid positions. They don't have any role in my life. And the reason that I have them is because otherwise I'll get in my way, you know, and I'm a success coach. Well, why does a success coach need a coach? Everybody. Why does yeah. Gates need a coach? He has mm -hmm. a coach. Why does Warren Buffett need a coach? He has a coach. Why mm -hmm. does Richard Branson need a coach? He has, Oprah has a coach. Like why mm -hmm. do all these super successful people? Because it doesn't matter how successful you are. There will always be things that you're not seeing. Yeah. As a, yeah, as a coach, like the same thing with me, I can see some of the things and I can easily see some of the things in other people's. Mm -hmm. But there are still things that I don't see and I don't acknowledge until somebody brings it up. So I always like to meet like people like I ask questions mm -hmm. from other people. That's yeah. like I do a bit of the podcast or I do it's like part of my job and everything like this. And then my coaching is a really big part of my job. But then I need somebody else to ask me the questions. Absolutely. You know? Same thing. I need somebody. I can ask some questions by myself, but there might be some questions that I don't I have my blind spots and I don't know how to ask those questions. So you can only ask the questions that are, are within your realm of understanding. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you need to know that's outside of your realm of understanding, it's impossible for you to ask that question because it's outside of your realm of understanding. Period. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that. I liken this. I like to use analogy. I liken this to a fishbowl, you know, fish is in a fishbowl. Mm -hmm. So I learned this at some point that fish, their eyesight, uh, they can't see past like reflection. You know, we can look right. past a reflection in water and see what's inside the water. Their mm -hmm. eyes cannot do that. So okay. the reason that they'll bite a hook for a fisherman oh. is because they can't see what that line is attached to. And they just think, oh, food, and they bite it and then they're hooked. Okay. So they look up. And they don't see the boat and the, the hungry fisherman and all, you know, he looks down and sees them because our eyes are different. And so we are fish in our own fishbowl and we can't see out of the glass because of the reflection and we can't see out of the top of the water because the reflection. So sometimes we need somebody to be like, Hey, here's this thing mm -hmm. right up here. I have this great series of photos that I took um, years ago with my, husband's cat and my daughter's fish. Okay. And the cat is very, we did not let the cat eat the fish, like spoiler alert, the cat did not eat the fish, but the cat wanted to eat the fish. So it was this fish bowl and the cat would come to the top of the fish bowl and just stick like his nose or something just right at the top. So the fish thought it was food or something. Mm -hmm. Right as the fish came to the top, the cat would be like with his paw trying to get the fish. Mm -hmm. The fish didn't know, but the cat did. Oh, okay. Okay. We eventually moved the, the fish bowl so that the cat couldn't get, but not, not before I took a series of really cool photos of mm -hmm. this National Geographic moment that was in my living room. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, we are all that fish and we don't know what's out there until somebody's like, Psh, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's good to time. And that's why it's good to like, that's what's important about emotional intelligence to start acknowledging those feelings. Yes, yes. There's and a couple of really, really important points with emotional intelligence that I want to make sure that we cover. Um, okay. So I just have my notes down here. You know, being empathetic to others. Empathy is not emotional intelligence, but empathy is part of emotional intelligence. Empathy means does not mean that I'm going to feel what you're feeling. A lot of people get empathy wrong. They say empathy means putting myself in someone else's shoes. Mm -hmm. Don't do that because that actually can backfire on you um, mentally mm -hmm. because you could actually adopt a traumatic emotion. So instead of putting yourself in someone else's shoes, calm yourself, regulate your own emotions down, and then think about what the other person is saying that they're going through, what you're seeing that they're going through, and then develop your own emotions attached to that so that through that filter of your own emotions, you can inform aligned actions to help the person. Mm -hmm. So feeling what the person's feeling damages you, but feeling yes. what you feel connected to what the person's going through turns you into a helper. 
instead mm -hmm. of the victim. So empathy is really, really big. Another one that I don't know if any of us love is accepting criticism. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'll accept it. <laughs> it might not feel good in the moment, but if you look at it like this, even the harshest of criticism, even criticism that's delivered from someone who's mean spirited mm -hmm. can be a gift if you allow it. So if you have something, let's see, I'll just pick up something. That's on, I have a bunch of crystals on my desk, so I'll just pick up this. If you have this and you give it to me as a gift, I can either accept it or say thank you, but no, mm -hmm. I don't have to accept it. If you tell me that this crystal, the purpose of this crystal is to roll it around in my hands all the time while I'm thinking happy thoughts, um, which it is a citrine, so it is a happiness stone. But um, mm -hmm. and and I don't do that. Let's say I just put it on its little stand over here, and it just sits there. That's okay, because you've given it to me, so it's mine now. I don't actually have to do with it what mm -hmm. you intended for me to do with it, but I can do something with it. Mm -hmm. You know. So we get you have a YouTube channel. I mean, I don't even read the comments. I read the comments when my assistant says there's some things that I, questions that I need to go in and answer, but I don't read the mm -hmm. comments otherwise because there are some trolls out there. So, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody has an opinion and I, I welcome opinions and I honor opinions and I don't necessarily need to share that. Um, and respond. Right. Thanks. Yeah. I have like some other things as well, like when somebody's trying to, uh, not to have a conversation, but just prove that they are right. So that moment I disconnect myself and I don't respond. Because yes. like, like I had this feeling like, oh, I have to respond and I have responses. But yes. I know that that person is already not, doesn't want a response. It just wants to prove that they're right. Right. For themselves or for me, it doesn't matter. But I know that my response is not going to change anything for him right now. So it, no, no point to exaggerate it. Correct. And that's, that is a, a beautiful example of self-regulation. Like, you know, it is really what you're, what you just, I'm just going to put it in yeah. different words. Mm -hmm. What you just described is discernment and discernment is beautiful. It means that you've accepted something, you look at it and you say, is this actually mine? And if we would all teach that question, that self question at the kindergarten level, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. This thing that little Susie said to me, this thing that little Billy just said to me, is this actually mine or is this their stuff? Yep. If we would teach that and promote that at the very basic three, four, five year old level, Susie said, I'm ugly. Is that your truth? Is that actually yours? Yep. It sounds like Susie is hurting and wants somebody to join her in her mm -hmm. hurt. And so she spread hurt in an easy, low level way. You don't have to pick that up. You mm -hmm. don't have to pick it up. It's just like somebody throws trash on the ground. You can pick it up if you want to, but that's not your trash. You don't have to pick it up, mm -hmm. you know? And if we just will discern, is this actually mine? Anybody who's watching, like if you're taking notes, Write that question down. Is this actually mine? If you start asking yourself anytime you receive feedback, even anytime somebody says, oh, you've got to read this news article. Yesterday, I was hanging out with some friends, just having a very chill, chill day off. And one of my friends was showing me stuff that she found really, really amusing. And um, I just kind of didn't get it. We're from different countries. It's a culture. She was showing me some cultural stuff from Brazil. And I was like, I, I get that this is like, I don't understand the joke because it's not my cultural background and I have very yeah. little exposure to things Brazilian other than food, which is awesome. Um, and so I, you know, I kind of enjoyed watching her enjoy it mm -hmm. because I love her and she's my friend, but I didn't really get anything out of it. It's okay mm -hmm. to not pick it up and take it and try to put it on like I put on my shirt this month. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay. And I think that for some reason in our society, we feel like it's rude to not pick it up and try to put it on. But like the thoughts and interests and emotions and, and opinions are not one size fits all. 
and they don't have to be. And it's okay to leave it there mm -hmm. it's gently and with, with the most positive of, of outgoing energy. It's okay. It's okay to leave it. There. Just like all of us at one point have had a friendship that kind of dwindled or no longer yes. served us. So we needed to let it go. Um, and when we think about those, instead of being like, oh man, you know, it's sad that that friendship went away. Think, oh, how good for both of us that our energies were complete with each other and we were able to move on mm -hmm. so that I have more space in my life for other people, energies, events that will propel me to higher levels. Mm hmm when you say it like that, there's really no sadness over the loss of people because there's no, never, ever, ever any loss getting into quantum physics. Literally there's never any loss when, yeah, you, interact with, when you have interacted with someone, your particles will always be connected in, in a state of interaction. But mm -hmm. There's never any loss. And I'm saying this as someone, as somebody saying, well, I mean, you've never had anybody close to you die. My mother, my father, my grandparents, a sibling, like I, there's, is it loss? It's just changed. It's just changed energy. Is mm -hmm. there a physical change that needs to happen in me? Like I need to get used to that person not being here. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Not poo-pooing that. And you need to honor your humanity and honor that your humanity needs to get used to not being able to pick up the phone and call the other person or go see them or whatever. But there's really never any loss. And exploring, when you explore this in a bigger way, it helps you with every element of emotional intelligence because it brings the ownership back here. And that's what's most important when you take that ownership. I've been mean, actually like, that's, that's the thing as well. Like uh, another sentence that came to my mind recently was, um, you know, you say, we always say like we take responsibility and like you say ownership well, I was try I'm trying to tell people now taking responsibility or taking ownership doesn't make doesn't mean the same like you taking the blame right because okay maybe this situation or something was not created by you but you, when you take responsibility or then you can change it, but you don't take the blame. So you were not responsible in a way like that it happened, but you were responsible for changing it. Absolutely. And to understand the nuance of that, because some people will say, no, if I'm taking responsibility for it. Of course I'm taking the blame for it. No, yeah. you, but you don't have to. Taking mm -hmm. the blame for it actually is an emotional, energetic choice. Mm -hmm. And it's a very low level energetic choice. Mm -hmm. So even let's say something is entirely your fault <laughs> mm -hmm. and you take ownership of it. Ownership is, Hey, this situation involves me and this situation can be changed and moved forward in some way by me rectified, or if not corrected. So I'm going to own this part and move forward. That is the difference between blame. Blame creates victims and yeah. ownership creates solutions and solutions focus people and positive manifesting people. That's mm -hmm. the big difference there. It's just an energetic shift and it makes all the difference in the world and it feels different. Just, just think of, I love uh, playing a game when I'm um, teaching people and, and have classes or, or doing it. Okay. Um, and I'll say different words and I'll say, just close your eyes and listen to the energy in these words and just listen to the energy of blame and ownership. I didn't change my tone of voice, mm -hmm. my reflection. They feel different. When I say blame, there's this block that comes right. My solar mm -hmm. plexus heart center. And when I say ownership, I got kind of a, a, a buzz right around third oh, chakra and my mostly powerful for me. Yeah. It's like I feel power when I say over ownership. So that's another thing with, with emotional intelligence 
connect it with your words and see, see what your words feel like. My um, mom years ago, she passed away in 2010, but uh, she, before that, she had um, a couple of grandbabies before she passed away. And mm -hmm. uh, she remarked to me and she used to say, there were two words that she'd say all the time. And I'm like, you say those words way too much. One was amazing. And the other one was hate. And I just, that is the dirtiest four letter word, H-A-T-E. It's the dirtiest four letter word because do we really, um, you know, do we really have that in us? Because in order to hate something, you have to have hate inside you. And I frankly don't, um, mm -hmm. I don't hate anything or anyone. Um, mm -hmm. and I've said that. Some people do. Some people have that so 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 integrated in them, and it's usually from something that started already in childhood mm -hmm. or relationship, and it's like got in there. Yeah, like and that's, one of those blocks. that's one of those blocks that holds people back. You're like, well, it happened to me in childhood, so there's nothing I can do. There is something you can do. That we can do more. We can we can retool that. We can reorient that. But my mom said. Uh, that my little my little nephew um he's 23 years old now but he was two um when this happened she said well michael um pointed out to me today i said oh i hate that something something mm -hmm. said, oh that's a bad word because we teach little kids that hate's not a nice word like don't mm -hmm. say that like we don't say that word but grandmama says it mm -hmm. you know? so he she said you know it really made me think how often do i say that word i'm like you say it all the time. Um, and so she started to evaluate how often she says it. Um, and I mean, now my, my daughter's friends, um, they'll come here and everybody knows we don't use that word here. Mm -hmm. I, I used to take care of a friend of mine has a couple of twins. And when they were, when they were little, they would spend a lot of time here. She's a single mom. She needed a lot of help. And um, I remember one time they had asked for something specific for dinner and I made it for them. And um, apparently I got the wrong kind of green bean. I got like the whole green beans and steamed them. And they wanted the ones that are like chopped up and flat in the in the freezer section of the grocery store. And I don't do the freezer section of the grocery store, but um, it's, it's fine for anybody who does. I just don't, that's not where I got my vegetables um, uh, by and large. Um, and one of the twins said, oh, I hate this. And I was like, do you really? And I sat down and had this deep discussion with two six-year-olds about really what mm -hmm. does that word mean? Do we actually feel that, you know, is it in us? Is something that I don't, and I said, I don't actually believe that something is dirty and gross and dark. It's hate exists inside you. Does mm -hmm. it, you know, does it? And so words matter so much. And especially there's one thing, this is, you know, I mean, part of emotional intelligence, I think that any sort of logical, emotional thinking ties back to emotional intelligence. Really, really watch your words, but really, 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 really watch anything that you put after the two words, I am. Okay. Think about how you fill that blank. We've talked about anger. We've talked about sadness. We've talked... And people put those words after I am, you are making a declaration to the universe. I am this thing, which is why affirmations are so important. I am successful. I am happy. I am content. I am loved. I mm -hmm. love others. You, When you put something in that blank after I am, you are de energetically declaring it to be true. So if you put angry or sad or depressed, or anything like that in that blank you're elevating that negative energy mm -hmm. and it gets stuck in you stay, it gets stuck in your brain and you more like you attach more things to it as well so people will say but what if i am mm -hmm. you know what if i do have these feelings then i'll say how about this switch to the word switch the word am to have i have a lot of anger in me right now mm -hmm. I have a lot of sadness. I'm experiencing something that feels like depression. I figure out another word other than am. Do you feel? I feel. Yes. I feel I'm experiencing. I have all of that. None of that is declaring. Because when you say I am, 
you're saying this is the essence of my being. Like I am a woman. I am. I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. The essence part of the essence of my being is feminine. Mm -hmm. So that's true. I can say I am a woman. I am happy. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's fine. Cause that's positive. It's mm -hmm. going to be pleasant. I am a solution seeker. Yeah. yeah, and like the way you can say, like, I felt anger, I felt fear, and now, like, but then don't get stuck the way I see in this all, don't get stuck in it instead of like, okay, I felt angry, and how can I turn it around? I don't want to keep on feeling this way. So what should be my next steps to get out of this feeling if it's still lasting? Or how can I just dismiss it? Okay, it's already passed, like some other situation. I have a link. I'm so glad that you said that. Um, I have a link that I'm going to share. I've already shared a couple of links with you, um, but I, there's another link that I'm going to share with you. I actually have a tool that everybody can have for free. It's a one page document. It is very easy. You can print it out. Actually, um, I don't have it up on uh, my pegboard here, but I've got it in our um, home office. And I was just going to tell the viewers, like all the links for Dr. Jane is going to be in description as well. So you can uh, get all the links from there and uh, go and find all the information. Okay. So what is that the link about? So this is called the emotional progression scale. And I hope that you can print it in color because it has a whole lot of colors on it. And it is basically a stair-step scale that shows you all of the basic emotions. And I say basic emotions because every emotion is nuanced. If you're angry, you can actually say, well, I'm furious or I'm frustrated or I'm, there's a lot of different components of anger. So this just boils it down to basic emotions. There's a lot of them. But, and then it takes it on the color spectrum from black, which would be just the deepest, darkest despair, um, all the way up to uh, kind of a, a light, light bluish purple. So if you think about going from the ground all the way up your chakras, it's basically the way that the colors go. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, if you uh, we talked about when we first started, awareness and regulation. You have awareness that you have a feeling that doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. Open up this document or you go and, and, and find it. If you've printed it out, I've actually got it in, in our um, kitchen because we've got kids and sometimes they're, you know, that what and I'm like, what are you feeling right now? Literally like point on the chart and just tell me the word. It doesn't matter. No judgment. Tell me the word. Okay. You're very, very angry. What is the next best feeling? So what you do is you go to the chart and you find the emotion that you, you find, you're finding the emotion oh. that you have become aware of okay and then you start reading the emotions above it don't go down mm -hmm. <laughs> go up. Um, you start reading the emotions above it so anger something that's above anger is joy that's a huge jump so i'm mm -hmm. like i'm feeling angry right now i can't go straight to joy yep. i can go from anger to uh frustration would be one step up from anger i can go from anger to discontent that would be a couple of steps up from anger i can mm -hmm. go from angry to irritated that would be a few steps up from anger mm -hmm. okay i'm going to release anger and i'm just going to focus on being irritated mm -hmm. and we don't necessarily want to focus on being irritated but in this case we do because it's better than what we had before and then when you have wrapped your arms around irritation you can still say okay now that i'm fully irritated <laughs> irritation doesn't feel so great so can I go from irritation to slightly troubled or whatever? You know, can I go mm -hmm. from irritation to neutral? That would be kind of a big mm -hmm. Can I release this irritation and just be apathetic? Mm -hmm. Can I try to say this doesn't belong to me? So I'm going to force myself to not care about it. Mm -hmm. And then you just stair step. You just stair step. And it sounds oversimplified. It sounds like it's an oversimplification of emotions. It's not. Emotions are simple and human. Mm -hmm. yeah. lot of, that's that's the most important thing to understand as well. A lot of those things are so simple, which is try to think them crazy and difficult and attach so many things to it instead of just taking it really simply. Exactly. And you know, the worst things that we can attach to it is the past and the future. Yes. And that's usually what makes it worse. 
is mm -hmm. we're angry and we're sitting here in anger and we're angry about something that happened five minutes ago or five days ago or five years ago or whatever people who hold grudges 50 years ago you know so we're sitting yeah. here in this moment right now this beautiful moment where there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. and we're letting our brain get in a time machine and go back to something that does not bring us joy and bring it to this moment why first of all don't do that don't bring pet now i read something this morning about we need to forgive and forgiveness is one of the keys to emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and there was this online argument about forgive and forget no you can't forget well you have to forget well how do you forget forgiveness and forgetting are not the same thing mm -hmm. forgiveness means that you recognize that you're holding something Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel good and actually doesn't belong to you. If somebody has wronged you, that's their stuff. And then you might have to deal with the ramifications of their stuff, but their stuff belongs to them. So forgive them. Do you forget that and let them do it over and over again? You don't have to as long as you recognize it with the proper boundaries. Mm -hmm. holding a grudge, that person's horrible and I'm not going to know that's you harboring more nastiness mm -hmm. your stuff. But if you just set boundaries, okay, well, this person hurt me in this way. I'm going to limit my exposure to them. I'm, I send them off with love and I wish them well. I'm going to limit my exposure to them. I'm going to forgive them for this misstep. And now I know to be more careful of my own energy and my own stuff in this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forgiveness. You forgive yourself. The other day I, I said something to someone um, and it was, I don't even remember what it was now. Uh, oh, someone had asked me for a favor and I don't know what like went through my brain before the words started to come out, but mm -hmm. I totally just said something that didn't make any sense at all. And okay. I, I came back later and I was like, Oh my gosh. Mm. like a complete idiot what was i thinking what in mm -hmm. what in the world and i mean normally i don't go through that because i just i'm like yeah. i can't touch that moment i'm not gonna worry about it but on this particular day this was three days ago i was just like oh my gosh it sounded so stupid what why and so finally i was mm -hmm. like i stopped everything mm -hmm. i was doing i closed my computer i was working and this thought just kept distracting me. It was like, it was like a, a, a nosy coworker who wouldn't leave me alone. Like the thought just kept coming in. Like, but you mm -hmm. sound stupid this morning, but you sounded dumb today. And I was just like, what, what? Stop. I stopped everything. I closed my eyes. I took a deep cleansing breath and I practiced Ho'oponopono with myself. Mm -hmm. You know, the, yes. it's, it's a, it's an ancient Hawaiian art of self forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It is. Forgiving yourself. And so I was like, you know what? I just need to forgive myself for being a complete nincompoop for 30 seconds. I'm sorry. Thank you. I forgive you. I love you. You know, I went through that whole mm -hmm. thing. And then this is the first time I've thought about it since just because I was using it as an example. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others. Life's too short to carry around extra baggage. It's exactly. like a backpack with a 10 pound weight in it. Girl, take that thing off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very important. So let's start wrapping up as well. And like, what is why is the emotional intelligence uh, important for mental health wellness? I don't think that you can truly have a whole picture of mental health without some degree of emotional intelligence. So let's mm -hmm. look at it's so easy to look at what not to do, isn't it? So let's mm -hmm. look at what not to do. We all know that person who gets wrapped up in things. That person mm -hmm. who has to post stuff online so that they can get outside validation. A yes. person that doesn't have any connection to their true essence, their true self, so that they know who they are and they need that constant affirmation from outside. When you don't focus just on those first two points, I mean, I went through a lot of the 12, but I didn't go through all of the 12. But when you just mm -hmm. focus on those first two points, the awareness and the self-regulation, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. It changes 
everything. And so I don't believe that anyone just look at the proof is in the pudding. Have you ever heard that, that, uh, uh, old adage, the proof is in the pudding. You know, if somebody can do something, you're going to see proof of it in their life. If mm -hmm. someone has mental health, you're going to see proof of it in their life. You're going right. to see happiness. You're mm -hmm. going to see lower stress or at least the ability to process stress in a healthy way. You're going to see healthy relationships. You're going to see um, long term connections. You're going to see a lot of these things in the life of someone who is emotionally healthy. Mm -hmm. so look at the people who I described before. The people are mm -hmm. all over the map. Look at them. Do they seem healthy to you? Yeah. Yeah. They don't. And they don't. Physically as well, it affects physically as well. A lot of times those people are physically not healthy either. They're, they're usually up and down, up and down. Yo-yo dieters, they have a lot, they get sick a lot. They mm -hmm. don't feel good and can't explain it. They have hormonal imbalances. Emotional health is the bedrock of every other health. And a medical doctor, an MD would say, maybe not the exact same thing, but they would tell you that the number one cause or inspiration of death in the country is stress because stress causes your immune system to go down. Mm -hmm. And when your immune system is low, you can develop illnesses and all sorts of things. I um, happen to live very, very close to a famous hospital for children. Um, mm -hmm. The donations come to a worldwide um, and I've had the honor of going there and teaching and leading meditation to very, very young cancer patients. So why do they call me in to teach this to these little kids who are going through all these cancer treatments? Because this, this wonderful, this wonderful organ in the top of your beautiful head is your greatest pharmacy. Yep. All of your hormones are signaled from here. Everything is signaled from here. And your second brain, your gut, which is why nutrition is so important. Mm -hmm. Those two brains, you have two brains. Those two brains work together. They're buddies. Mm -hmm. They're body system. You've got to have the emotional element in order for you to have that full emotional health. Mm-hmm. That's true. Is there anything else in your notes that you still want to go over really quickly? There's one thing um, that I think may also help since you were asking like for steps, how does somebody become more emotional and emotionally intelligent? There's one skill, one practice that's mm -hmm. very easy to do. It only takes you to discipline yourself to do it. You can do it for a few minutes every day. You can do it for a few minutes every week. I like to do, um, five minutes daily, 30 minutes weekly. And I do a week every year. Okay. And it's called reflection. Okay. Toward the end of the day, when I'm about to wind down into my evening routine that prepares me for restful sleep, that prepares me for a positive tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So my positive tomorrow depends on my discipline tonight. Mm -hmm. okay. So before I go to rest, I'll sit for a few moments. I usually do this. I like to take a salt bath every evening. So I usually do this while I'm in my salt bath. <laughs> Close my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, feels good anyway. May as well do something else productive. And then I'll journal after. <clears throat> and I reflect on the day. How did I spend my time that was productive? How did I spend my time that I wish that I would have invested in something else? Not with regret. I'm not mm -hmm. saying, oh, you shouldn't have done this. Nope. Yeah. I'm saying, hey, how could I have better invested this today to inform my tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Who was I around today? This is very important. Okay. Who are you? Who was I around today? And did they have a positive, negative, or neutral effect on my day? Helps me to decide who I want to include in my tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I do that three to five minutes. And then I'll just, after I get out of the bath, I'll just write down a couple of notes. Okay. Then... Every Sunday, I have 30 minutes scheduled and I sit down with myself and a cup of tea. I love hot herbal tea. And so I sit down with myself in my favorite chair with my herbal tea and my notebook where I've had my end of day reflections. 
And then I look at it collectively and I come up with my plan for the next week. What am I going to do? What I am, what am I going to avoid? So I didn't just say, what am I going to do? And what am I going to not do? Not do is a negative. What am I going to do? What am I going to avoid? Who am I going to spend time with? Who am I going to avoid? All of those things that informs my next week. And then the last week of every year, you will not see me anywhere. It's because I unplug, I go, and I do a beautiful reflection. Um, it's family time. It's it's rest and recharge time. It is wonderful. And I do that for the last week of every year. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yeah, super yeah. important. And I wanted to mention, like, for the viewers, like, if there's, like, uh, the, if you can't avoid that person, at least set boundaries mm -hmm. how you interact with that person if you can completely avoid the person that causes negative emotions or something set some boundaries so your uh being around them is limited as possible yeah absolutely and and remember they actually can't cause the negative emotions they inspire you to develop the negative emotions but you can also Put a stop on that and you can say you know what i know that this person usually inspires something that hurts or mm -hmm. irritates or something that i don't want or they even like some of them they take their own uh negative emotions off on others so you know that they're coming along bringing something their personal things to you oh yeah oh venting i do not mm -mm. I have several several videos on my YouTube channel about venting and how you shouldn't allow anybody to vent on you. You shouldn't vent on other people. Some people say venting is get it out. It'll make you feel better. It'll make you. It's kind of like when you're feeling depressed and you want to eat the cake. It's like the cake will feel good for this long and then you'll feel gross later. That is what venting is. It is emotional chocolate cake. I love chocolate. Mm -hmm. It is emotional chocolate cake and just don't eat it. Don't do mm -hmm. it. You can journal. This made me feel or I allowed myself to feel this when this happened and why, why, why? Just ask yourself, why did I feel angry when this person said this thing to me? Well, because I remember being hurt by this years ago. Why did it hurt back then? Well, because I remember experiencing something and then all of a sudden you're going through your own personal history book and you're realizing this person here today did not hurt me that much. I have a whole lot of stuff that I'm bringing with me and it irritated that and sparked that. And you know what? I'm going to let that go. I'm just going to let it go because it doesn't serve me today. And what you can do is you can actually talk to your past. You're yes. talking to your subconscious mind and you can say, Hey, subconscious mind, this does not serve us anymore. It is, it is making us unhealthy because it's bringing stress in. quit it, cut it out, veer away mm -hmm. from that programming. And your subconscious mind might not do it the first time, but if you keep telling it to stop, I promise, over time. Well, well it's, it's just all a matter of practicing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it's so, like, sort of getting in an hour. So uh, I'll, I can talk forever. It's so, such a pleasure to talk with you as well for mm -hmm. like, all the information you're giving out for our viewers. And, um, but, Let's go over how people can connect with you. I'm going to put your website up here as well. And all the information is also in this uh, description. So you can get all the links there. Yeah, and I'll send you a couple more more links after we disconnect for you to go back in and add that back in. I'm uh, at Dr. Jane on Telegram. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got my website right there, Guild Coaching. If somebody wants to schedule just a, a chit chat, schedulegild.com is my scheduling um, platform and you can also connect to that through guildcoaching.com mm -hmm. yeah. sounds great so what would be your closing closing thoughts closing thoughts emotional intelligence is not a destination you're not going to achieve it and then be able to sit back and say wow look i'm so emotionally intelligent mm -hmm. emotional intelligence is a journey that we travel every single day of our beautiful lives and some days we practice it better than others and that's okay. And it's okay that you have a down day. Your body has a down day sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So it's okay that you have a down day. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just do that little reflection. Just recognize what the emotions were, you know, just have that awareness 
do your reflection and then be more self-aware the next day and you'll be great for a while and then you're going to trip again and it's okay and do your reflection you know it's mm -hmm. it's an everyday thing and some days you might just hit it out of the park you might say wow i just really rocked that and that's awesome repeat 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 and then be kind to yourself when the repeating doesn't quite go as you wanted it to mm -hmm. just be mm -hmm. kind if you're kind and honoring of yourself everything will be perfect. yeah that sounds perfect that's a perfect way on end as well so thank you dr jane thank you yeah thank you okay